I bring you good news of a great joy, which will come to all people. For you, to you is born this day a Savior, Christ the Lord. Merry Christmas, and welcome to you all on this Christmas Eve. Everyone at St. Hilary is welcome to you, and it's a delight to have you here worship with us. So let us rejoice together and begin by listening to our first hymn. is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, 
the Messiah, the Lord. It will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Glory, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth. symbolize God's promise to fulfill their wish. For a child will be born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulder, and his name, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to all on whom his favor rests. Blessed be the name of the Lord. wonderfully restored our human nature. May we share the divine life of your Son, Jesus Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please be seated for the reading of the word. reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. As people exult, 
when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Psalm 96 will be read responsibly by half verse. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him Strength and beauty are his sanctuary. Ascribe to him the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. A reading from the letter of Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Mm-hmm. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear. 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So Merry Christmas, everyone. I wish you all the great blessings on this beautiful Christmas Eve. It's been a difficult year, but we are here. And Christ is arriving, and we can celebrate that. And it is Christmas Eve. Now, is there usually a more magical time of year? Even this year, there's magic in the air. And outside these doors, this is one of the few times of the year when family and home regularly take precedent over all our other concerns, work, whatever is going on in our lives. Now we focus on family and home. And perhaps that's one of the reasons why so many people hold this time of the year to be dear to them. Now people, they go into their homes, they light the fireplace. I don't know about you, but in our family, this is the time of year we actually use the fireplace. And we fill our home with candlelight and the smell of cinnamon and families eat special meals together with the glow of tradition and memories hanging amongst them. But there is some irony, truly some irony, to the coziness of Christ Christmas in our culture, since what we celebrate actually is the birth of a child to a couple facing challenging circumstances a long way from home. Now the building in which Jesus was born probably didn't smell like cinnamon or roasting turkey, and nor was it decorated with poinsettias and colored lights. Quite frankly, it smelled like hay and animals. And it's hard to imagine Mary feeling very comfortable in these surroundings, given that she was about to give birth to a baby. I imagine that first Christmas was a real struggle for both Mary and Joseph. They had been traveling in all likelihood on foot, and Mary was doubtlessly experiencing, experiencing a great deal of discomfort and pain. Imagine hiking for a day, nine months pregnant. And Joseph, he had to be worried about his wife and the baby, and was probably pretty frustrated that there was no place for them to live and feel secure. Now the shepherds, whom it is said Jesus visited Jesus first, they weren't the stalwart characters we see on Christmas cards. And by the time of Jesus, shepherding had become a profession most likely to be filled from those who lived at the bottom of the rung of the social ladder. They were, they were the folks that couldn't get what others considered a decent job. Society stereotyped shepherds as liars and degenerates and thieves. Their testimony wasn't allowed in court. And many towns actually barred shepherds from entering. They were classed with tax collectors, people who were sinners by virtue of their career, what they did for a living. And they were most likely not very clean when they arrived at that lowly stable. Our modern day Hallmark version of Christmas distracts us from the gritty reality of that story where the extraordinary nature of the story really lies. Now God came among us not in a first century version of a five star hotel, but to a humble couple of travelers far from home and family. Something we might, many of us can relate to this year. Jesus' first attendants were from the edges of polite society. They weren't its leaders. Right from the beginning, the author of the Gospel of Luke lets us know that the story of Jesus is going to unfold in unexpected ways, far from royalty and power and riches. Now, the writer of the Gospel of Luke tells the story of Jesus with an emphasis, emphasis on a theme that begins right here at his birth right there in that less than splendid stall without royalty in attendance. Now Jesus deals kindly with people on the margins and tells stories with unexpected heroes, such as the Good Samaritan. The God we see through the portrayal of Jesus in Luke is a God who reaches past the boundaries of race and class and gender and religion to touch the people who are on the outside. And it starts with the story of Jesus' very first night. 
Now, the earliest Christians didn't celebrate Christmas, not the way we do. The, this observance came later, when Christians began to talk about Jesus as more than a prophet, and they began to see him as divine, and therefore to think about his whole life as a message to humankind from God. They began to talk about the conception of incarn the concept of incarnation, by which they meant how God entered human history, and he entered as a human in a human life. This made that birth of Jesus a signal event in history. In Luke, the conception and birth of Jesus follow the pattern of stories from the Hebrew scripture in which God is always acting in unexpected ways to make relationship with God's people. He keeps trying and comes to us in places we didn't expect. Now, just as Sarah conceived, remember she conceived when she was quite old, or as Hannah conceived when she had been told she was barren, and just as Moses was called to lead, though he really felt inadequate to the task. So Mary and Joseph, they were members of the 12 tribes of Israel, living in an occupied nation and answering to the orders of a Roman governor, they answered God's call. She was a young, unwed, pregnant girl, and he a simple carpenter. In the midst of ordinary human history, with one more oppressor occupying one more province, telling uncomfortably and surprised by a birth far from home, God's presence was known. Now, God comes to us every day. God isn't excluded from a hard day at the office or a challenging commute or even a hospital room or a government office. The birth of Jesus says to us that what God desires, really truly desires, to be with us in all times and all places, not only when the house is clean and the children are sleeping and we are ready. Those who visit Jesus as a baby in Luke's gospel show us that this is good news for everyone, and perhaps especially for those whose lives are on the margins, making them the most open and receptive to good news. One of the names for Jesus in scripture is Emmanuel, which means God with us. This familiar story of a man, a woman, and a baby, and the unlikely companionship of angels and shepherds claims for a time that God is indeed with us, wherever we find ourselves, however difficult that path may be. As Martin Luther wrote, the angels declare that he is born unto us, not merely born. The birth of Jesus is a gift, something precious that binds us to the giver in love. Like all the best gifts, this one can change our lives if we let it. We always have the option of visiting this story once a year and allowing the festival of Christmas to engulf us, enjoying the sweet story without really truly engaging its power. This story's true value comes in its gritty reality, its affirmation of the human experience its narrative of God's love for us, known in Jesus of Nazareth. God intends for love to grow us, to change us, yes, to heal us and remake us, not merely to delight and comfort us, but yes, that too. And this evening, we remember the beginning of Jesus' story in all its gritty reality and sweetness. And tonight, we remember the important message of Christmas, and even when things do not go as planned or hoped for, perhaps especially when things do not go as planned, God arrives. If the Son of God can arrive in such circumstances, so can truth and joy and love for all of us, even in this troubling year. Merry Christmas and God's blessings be with you. Amen. Gentle Mary laid her child lowly in a manger. There he lay the undefiled to the world a stranger. Such a babe in such a place, can he be our savior? Ask 
conceived of all the race who have found his favor. Angels sang about his birth, wise men sought and found him. Heaven's star shone brightly forth, glory all around him. Shepherds saw the wondrous sight, heard the angels singing. All the plains were lit that night, all the hills were ringing. Gentle Mary laid her child lowly in a manger. He still the undefiled, but no more a stranger. Son of God of birth, beautiful the story, praise his name in all the earth, hail the King of glory. The service continues with the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we gather to celebrate Christmas, let us pray to the living God by responding to Emmanuel, God with us, with, we welcome you. Lord God, thank you for our church and its people, for our deacons, priests, and bishops, especially Andrew, our diocesan bishop, Jenny, suffragan bishop, and Adrian, our priest and for all who pray. 
bless us all and strengthen us for your service so we can touch the world with your love. Emmanuel, God with us, we welcome you. Lord God, we thank you for our world and all its beauty and blessing. Teach us your ways, your love and your truth, and let your kingdom grow and flourish. Emmanuel, God with us, we welcome you. Lord God, we thank you for our families, our neighbors and our friends, for the happiness of human loving and sharing. We pray for your blessing on all those we love, whether present with us today or far away. Emmanuel, God with us, we welcome you. Lord God, we thank you for health and strength and pray now for your help and healing. Wherever people ache with pain and sorrow, loneliness or fear, bless them in their need and surround them with love. Lord, Lord God, we pray especially for families who are separated from each other, frontline workers who are working so hard for us and who are working on Christmas. We pray for our government and all who are working to distribute the COVID-19 vaccine. We pray for everyone who is hungry, who is lonely, who is feeling despair at this time. We pray for all who are in hospital. Be with them and bring them comfort. Emmanuel, God with us, we welcome you. Lord God, we thank you for lives well lived and all who have guided us to you. We pray for those who have died and all for whom Christmas sharpens the loss of loved ones. Emmanuel, God with us, we welcome you. Lord God, we thank you for Christmas joy and all the opportunities to show our love for one another. May our love rooted in yours continue throughout the year. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God of peace, your Son, Jesus Christ, has reconciled us to you. May all we offer you today renew us as members of your household. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is the mystery of his, his incarnation, was made perfect man, of he flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother. In him we have seen a new and radiant vision of your glory. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices and sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ, and make them new, and bring us to that city of light, where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviors taught us, let us pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and light. The gifts of God for you, the holy people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. stand. Father of all, the child born for us is the Savior of the world. May he who made us your children welcome us into your kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. And together let us say, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation. 
in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the joy of angels and the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And have a merry, merry Christmas. God bless. joy to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.